to Escuela del Sur. We are here with an incredible ex-athlete, ex-gymnast from Romania, and now a coach in Dubai, Sabina Kojokar. Welcome. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. I'm so glad you accept this interview. Uh, we have a lot for ask and answer because your background is incredible. It's long from your national team and also from now your experience in Dubai and etc. But we will go from the beginning. Okay. Uh, the audience want to know who you are. Um, who I am. Who I am or what I do. Who you are. This is a, this is a first question. Mm, I'm um, many things to many people, I guess. I'm a, I'm a wife. I am a coach. I'm a leader, I think. I'm a daughter. I'm a sister. So I'm from Romania, as you know. Yeah. I've been practicing gymnastics for over 14 years. The city in Romania? Um, I come from Sibiu. That's the center of the country. A very beautiful place to visit. Um, yeah, so I've been practicing gymnastics for 14 years. I, I've been in my club in Sibiu for from four years old to 13. And then I've been selected to the national team. And I've been with the national team for four years. Uh, at that time, the junior team was training in Onesh, and I've been there in Onesh, uh, Nadia Komonesh's city, for one year. And then the senior uh, team was training in Deva, so we moved to Deva and we trained for three years there. A lot of years, some people do it longer. And for me, it was just 14 years. Full of gymnastics, only gymnastics. What is your first memory you remember? I always say this story because my first memory is actually the first day I, I went to gymnastics. Um, it was memorable maybe because um, my mom put me in an alert mood on the way to <laughs> the gymnastics. She was concerned whether I'm too young to start gymnastics, so she asked me on the way. What will you do? What will you say if if they say you are too young to start? You know, and I never answered because I, I it, it, to me it was kind of like alert question. So when I arrived there and I instantly loved the place, love. uh, kind of like Disneyland for me, you know, like in front of my eyes. So the coach there has uh, asked me to uh, climb on the. Um, Wall bars, you know the wall bars. Ah, yeah, yeah. Walk on the beam to climb, uh, to jump on the bar. You know all these uh, skills that we also do for assessments back in my country to see if the kid is courageous enough, if they have you know like agility and if they have courage and if they have some uh, natural strength. You know, uh, but for me it was just fun, fun, and you know I. I loved it. So since I loved it, I remember my mom's question when uh, the coach asked me after the assessment, he was like, okay, so how, how old are you? <laughs> I was worried he's not going to accept me. So I said, I'm five years old, you know. And you was four? I was almost four. Five. Three years and I think eight, eight or 11 months. You was ready for gymnastics. I'm not sure what the coach saw. I just know what I saw. You know, those eyes, when they go like, pop out, like in Tom and Jerry, when they see something, they like, <laughs> so, yeah, that was for me. Um, I don't remember many days of my gymnastics uh, years in, in the beginning. I remember just a few moments, you know, I just know that I loved it, you know, because it is said that we don't, we don't remember necessarily the experiences that happened to us but we do remember the feeling you know so that's kind of like stuck with me the feeling of emotion the sensation from those days yeah maybe the challenge that came with it every time i discovered that i could do certain things you know it was like absolute pleasure for me you know it's like uh, you conquer you conquer and you conquer yourself you conquer every move that's you know, 
in talks to you and you repeat it over and over again. And if you're ambitious enough, you know, when you succeeded, then you'll, you'll feel this pleasure, I guess. Who was the jump in between the foundation, the fundamental gymnastics to go to juniors? Or who was what you feel have the, the Lyotard of Romania? Look, our training in club in, a, in my city by my coach was already like prepared for us to reach a certain goal. Oh, yeah. So as you start with the undermine, right? Okay, so we prepared this generation to go to Olympics. We have to plan it and what we're training this way. So um, my performance started gradually since I was already in the club, but my um, competition, like the international competition didn't really start until I actually went to the national team. So I would say that the difference, the transition from my club to the national team is, is mostly felt in the fact that I was moving from my home. And now I was moving with uh, other kids who were in gymnastics uh, far from my parents. And um, we were only focused on gymnastics. You know, gymnastics. How old you was when you made this jump? 13. 13, 13. years old. Um, I would say the first year was the most difficult, but after that, I just, you know, everybody adapts to um, what's necessary, I guess. And uh, my parents were able to come and visit from time to time in a weekend, so. Yeah. Oh, it was, was challenging, because I think you're so live alone, complete, start the training more times a week, something not easy, I can imagine. Yeah, but it's done. Some people adapt easier than others, I guess. And I don't know, I think I was okay. You know, of course, I miss my family, but uh, we were so busy and so focused on what we're doing, you know, then, um, and everything was so structured. Then, once you get the ball rolling, you just roll. roll, roll, with roll it. Yeah. difficulty <laughs> and more skills. Yeah. So what was the first place you traveled internationally? Well, my first official with the national team when when I was in the club level, uh, my first international outing was in France. So it was like a France Romania competition between clubs. But with the national team, I really don't remember either. It was like Turkey or Bulgaria or. I don't remember. But when you travel a lot, you told me Hawaii. It was in yes. Hawaii. Hawaii, that was in 2001, I think. Yes, I really enjoyed that place. Tokyo. Yes, Japan. Yeah, Japan in 2001 as well for Kimi Um, I do remember a few competitions. I don't remember all of them, but I do remember a few places and a few competitions that I attended. Europeans. That's definitely, I remember that. <laughs> Why do you remember this? Uh, maybe because of the meaning of the event, European Championship, you know. Though for me, it was like a junior competition to which I have performed really well. I would say it was um, a peak of my performance. Uh, and it happened to be in the year of 2000 when I was... 14 or 15, I was 15, I think, already. Yeah, this was in France, where was the... Yes, uh, in France. Yeah, because Eddie Bocciarini told, uh, told me, he remembered you, he saw you in the competition, because he was junior. Was he there? Yeah, Eddie Bocciarini, <laughs> yeah, we sent a nice. great to Eddie. Yeah, and what other, um, what about the world the champion on your team? This competition, when you reach the... In the world championship. The, that was in Ghent, in Belgium. It just, um, it was, I remember it because, um, because of many things, but I just turned 16 on the way to the World Championship. So that was like a special gift for me for, for my 16th birthday. You know, when I'm in these competitions, I feel like I'm just like, um, just moving forward, like going- With the flow. 
just going through it. You know, I remember a bit of the challenges that I had there with the uh, uh, getting used to the new apparatus. I had some shoulder pain at that time that I remember, but um, it, it, that was a training moment. But when I'm in competition, I don't remember anything else than just doing my thing, you know? <laughs> I don't remember people around me who encouraged, who said what, or what is the audience doing. I just like remember the what I'm feeling and what I'm doing in that moment. And um, there are a few moments if you if you take a timer and you calculate how much time you're actually spending on these events. Yeah, it's like what one minute and a half on floor. It's like one minute and a half on beam. Yeah, 30. 40 to one minute, you know, my bar was probably just 40 seconds <laughs> average, but mm -hmm. you know, save it. Uh, and then two balls, 15, you know, how much time I spent? Five minutes total, five minutes in actually competing, you know, in which all I remember is I'm holding my breath, doing stuff, then all this pump and adrenaline that I was feeling. Uh, because of the anxiety and then, you know, uh, pressure that came with it. So, yeah. And after that um, moment of awakening is, oh, okay, I'm done. I finished my competition. Let's see uh, what place. Probably I, I haven't realized until even the ceremony was over, you know. I was just doing my job, okay? <laughs> so I just do what I know and you know, let the pieces fall uh, where they may. How many teammates on the at that time I think we were six. Six, yeah. And at that well, at that time and now you you get to choose who is who to compete what, at what, you know? So initially I was meant to compete only three apparatuses. So it would have been on fault and floor which were my best and bars I was okay but just uh, I didn't have like a high start, starting uh, value. value yes um but just last moment they have the coaches have decided I need to step step in and bars. do my bars uh, even though my value was not too high but I was that safe with it they knew exactly how much I'm going to get, you know, for that bar. <laughs> so it was safe. You know, sometimes it's a strategy that yeah, yeah, with yeah. a coach, as a coach, you need to consider, you know, whether you'd want a high value, but um, it's, risky. it's risky, yeah, to fall or to, you know, something happened and then you lose more. Uh, then safe. start a tiny bit lower, but someone is safer. So, um in that regards, I feel proud, you know, that I've been chosen and I've done my job, you know, so. Wow. Yeah. Incredible. How many things happen in one competition? Imagine every single team has different strategies. And just this coach catches this girl and say, you must to do now bars. And you're like, what? <laughs> or you were surprised or just in the competition or in the training for it? That was just, you know, because you have the qualification, right? And after the qualification, they strategize and they say, this goes here, that goes here, you do this, that, 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 that. You know, so you're like, okay, I'm not doing bars, fine, you know, and then like, Oops, I'm doing bars. Yeah, but all these changes, we were already uh, psychological trained to face anything in competition, you know, like at that level, you have to be ready for anything. Mental training starts before the actual big event. Yeah. Same as you train every skill separately. That's how you train also the competitions by going to other competitions or by uh, mimicking these competitions in an in a controlled environment, right? And uh, you try to change the environment every time and see how are your subjects behaving in it. <laughs> so um, like this spontaneous competitions or like um okay now you don't do on this team now you compete on this team the team that you don't like or something like this anything you know like anything that could prepare appear, yeah it could appear in in the real competition wow well, what about music because some people some coaches in europe they put a cassette on the past with the noise <laughs> of the people 
I mean, oh, yeah. I don't think we got this one, but sometimes we'd have we our compound was somewhat you know school, you know, like and we'd have our own facilities, facilities, yeah. And some colleagues from our school would be invited, so, like, like yeah, to come and just to watch a competition or like to you know just to mimic an audience or something, you know. Right. This is all this. There's a lot of things back uh, behind scene when you compete <laughs> because uh, now you see when they compete, they enter and they and they warm up and fire and all black and only one light on the beam and they all get. I I think the localization from your mind when you are on the beam. I don't know. You yeah. see everything different as compared a different beam, different position of within the judges. And the light just above you yeah. and all black. Like, yeah, well, I'm not sure if they still do it with competition. There was there was one competition that I attended and it was similar to this. And it was one, this was not a competition, it was mostly like a gala, like after an European, some gymnasts were invited to go and do this gala, like a show. A show. Yeah. You know, and I remember um after I just became the European champion on beam, I went to the Scala and fell three times <laughs> on beam. <laughs> you know, it was, it's a bit Different. embarrassing, you know, it's like, okay, uh, in the competition, you've been presented as the, as the world champion of the beam event. And then when you do the show, you fall three times. It's, but it was dark, yeah. pitch dark in the, in the, the whole facility only as you said only the beam was right so it was like completely different where you it's have like the references just, exactly you don't you don't get to get outside uh, when you're doing anything just just the beam. but in the other competition it, it's in france in marseille uh, the specific of the competition is like every year it's about the same but it's not that you know like it's not that dark because this is actually a competition and it's safety, I'm assuming, right? So you actually get to see a bit like a bit more of the podium. But the competition is a bit like a show, like dynamic. Uh, yeah. Yeah, dynamic. So it, it's that's a beautiful competition. One of the floor routines that I remember for some reason is in the Marcel competition. Somehow that <laughs> environment, the audience um, made me remember this moment. And I remember how I felt so confident with the floor routine. I think it's somewhere in YouTube. Yeah, we I have a lot of videos of you. I look at it and I'm like, Oof, you know, can't believe that's me and I miss that feeling. You saw the transition in gymnastics of what? From 2000, uh, these days, I mean, the boat, for example, mm -hmm. uh, bars. What was this transition in gymnastics when you see the table of all change? You need to change all. It was more easy and in Sydney when they changed the board and bars when they, they do you remember when they have this uh, cylinder between the high bar and the lower bar? Mm -hmm. it was a lot, a lot of things happened in 2000 to 2004. I think each, I've competed in a lot of different bars. The only difference would be the outside of it, but not necessarily the distance and the height. Okay, so the railings or like whatever holds the bar yeah, yeah. would have been different. It's just more like a perception difference. You know, just because you know, these bars are up here and they're not down here. When you do like a touch egg or anything, you just That's have the, you have the impression you're gonna kick the bars, but you don't, you know. So uh I did have the chance to either compete or train on different ones. That wasn't the big change. The big change was the vault. However, to me it appeared that it's easier to compete on the table vault. Because imagine, you know, especially for women, if you do a round of back in spring, you have to, you know, go backwards and make sure you land exactly on those 30 centimeters. Like so now you have this table where you, the area is a lot bigger, you can go a bit further away and a little bit more forward and you're still safe. So the reason they changed this for safety, first of all, and 
I think it was a very good change. Just in the beginning, we would have that perception you're going to kick the ball, you know, if you do not go back in spring, let's say, layout. At your tempo when you're there. Yeah, because, you know, before you didn't have that much of your a surface. Yeah. yeah. You know, so you can go with your legs anyway, but now you, you need to make sure you're kicking a bit further away, yeah? So, or at least high enough. Other than that, no big changes, uh, maybe good changes in terms of equipment, okay, right? The floor became more springy, like the beam became more like Softly. softer uh, on the surface, but still springy and flexible. So, yeah, I am not practicing anymore. I can't imagine what to do. No, but now, now the difficulty increase and increase. Is the, imagine when you did this floor, when it was a uh, key was without that, without the sprint. It was like a rhythmic uh, gymnastic really, gymnastic floor. Yeah, yeah. Without sprint. That's that's how I started in my club actually. Um it was underneath that was just like a like a carpet. Carpet, yeah. That was like mats made of this more like tougher foam, mm -hmm. I don't know how to call it. Then carpet, then on Diagonals where we would do the acro uh, series, we'd have another set of mats just to make it softer. The X. Well, I, I think that floor actually built my legs, okay, because I was training on it for how many years before I. <laughs> so when you changed to the springs floor, the floor with springs, yeah. it was more easy. It was more easy. And well, but also my skills has gradually improved so i needed a spring floor anyway you know and that, that's the one point so i i think when i moved to the national team i would have a spring floor so i think that would be my advantage you know in the club level competitions whenever i reach competition on a real floor i would be flying probably but uh when i reach the national team of course we'd have the best equipment for us so yeah Thank you.